Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show a 2020 South Korean, crime, horror, and mystery film called The Call. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2019, Kim seo yun loses her cell phone on the way to visit her sick mother in the countryside. Back in her childhood home, she finds an old cordless phone. As she tracks down her device, the phone rings, a distressed woman calling for someone called Sunhee. The caller hangs up and she brushes it off, thinking that they got the wrong number. After a hostile visit to her mother, seo yun comes home to the phone ringing. It's the same caller asking again for Sunhee. The caller gives out her address and seo yun notices that it's the same address as her own home. Later that night, seo yun wakes up to a loud noise and finds their family portrait on the floor. As she tries to hang it back up, she realizes that the wall is hollow and starts breaking it with a hammer. She soon discovers a set of stairs leading down to a basement. She explores the basement and finds a journal. The journal dates back to 1999 and is filled with pictures of Seo Taiji, a famous 90s singer. As she reads a disturbing entry, a picture of a woman falls out of the journal. The next day, Seo Yun learns from Sung Ho, their caretaker, that the woman's name is Young Suk and her mother was a shaman. Later that night, the phone rings again. The caller screams out that her mother is going to kill her. Terrified, Seo Yun hangs up and sees smoke coming from the basement. The next morning, the phone rings again. Seo Yun asks the caller about her address again and the caller confirms it. Judging from the journal, Seo Yun concludes that she must be talking to Young Suk, the woman who lived in the same house 20 years ago. She tells her that she's from the future. Young Suk doesn't believe her, but Seo Yun tells her to watch out for a plane crash at Gimpo Airport tonight. At dinner, Young Suk witnesses the disaster on television, confirming Seo Yun's claim. She calls Seo Yun again and asks about her life. They find out that they're both 28 years old and Seo Yun lets her listen to Seo Taiji's songs over the phone. She also tells Young Suk about the future. Young Suk tells her that her mom isn't her real mother and that she was born with a terrible fate. Seo Yun then shares that her father died from a fire when she was younger because her mother forgot to turn off the gas valve. Their conversation is cut short by Young Suk's mother. Meanwhile, in 1999, eight-year-old Seo Yun arrives at the house with her parents with a real estate agent, hoping to make the house their new home. Young Suk meets her and realizes that this child is the same Seo Yun whom she's talking to on the phone. Young Suk calls Seo Yun in 2019 and lets her listen to her father talking in the background. Having not heard her father for years, Seo Yun breaks down and cries. Young Suk tells her that she'll help her by saving her father. The next day, Young Suk sneaks out of the house and takes a bus to Seo Yun's address. She makes it to their residence just as soon as Seo Yun's mother leaves. Back in the present time, Seo Yun waits anxiously for Young Suk's call. Just then, an unknown number starts calling her new phone. She looks down and sees the scar on her leg from the fire disappearing. She drops her phone and stands in shock as the whole room changes around her. She goes out to see the house completely transformed too. In the garden, she's shocked to see her mother well and her father alive. She calls Young Suk immediately and thanks her for helping her. Young Suk sits in awe, thinking about the power she now holds in her hands. Over the next few days, Seo Yun tries to get used to her new life while Young Suk leaves signs around the house for her to discover. What she does in her timeline affects Seo Yun's timeline, confirming Young Suk's theory. One afternoon, Young Suk calls Seo Yun, but this time she doesn't answer. Throughout the day, Young Suk keeps calling her, feeling increasingly aggravated. When Seo Yun arrives, she apologizes and tells Young Suk that she spent the day out with her parents. Their conversation is cut short by Young Suk's mother who tells her to never call again. Meanwhile, Seo Yun grows worried and starts looking her up online. She finds a news article from 1999 stating that Young Suk was killed by her mother during an exorcism. When Young Suk calls her, Seo Yun warns her that her mother is going to kill her. Later that night, Young Suk's mother comes into her room and starts stabbing the figure under the bed cover, only to find out that it's a stuffed toy. Young Suk emerges from behind and starts laughing, knocking her mother out with a fire extinguisher. She pins her down and stabs her repeatedly. She calls Seo Yun after and says that she is now reborn. Back in the present time, Sun Ho visits Seo Yun's family carrying the year's harvest. Meanwhile, a parallel event is occurring in 1999. The younger Sun Ho arrives to see an erratic young Suk. He accompanies her inside and finds the house in disarray. As he puts away the fruits in the fridge, a trash bag falls out, containing the bloody severed head of young Suk's mother. Back in 2019, Seo Yun is having dinner with present Sun Ho and her family when the phone rings. She answers it and hears younger Sung Ho's voice in the background and then a loud thud before the call ends. 
When Seo Yun returns to the kitchen, she finds Sung Ho gone. Piecing two and two together, she runs to the police station and learns that Sung Ho was killed in the 90s by Young Suk. Back in 1999, a young police officer named Mi Yun, together with their chief visit Young Suk's house, investigating Sung Ho's disappearance. Mi Yun is instantly suspicious of Young Suk, but finding no evidence to link her to the case, they leave. When Young Suk calls her later on, Seo Yun confronts her about the murders and tells her that she'll get caught and be imprisoned for the rest of her life. Young Suk then demands her to find out how the cops catch her and reminds her that she was the one who saved her father's life and starts threatening her life. Seo Yun then breaks down in her room, unable to fathom the evil she has just unleashed. Meanwhile, Mi Yun digs up some records and discovers that Young Suk has severe antisocial and borderline personality disorders. As Young Suk tries to contact Seo Yun, she finds younger Seo Yun and her father on her doorstep. Seo Yun's father tells her that they were supposed to meet today to discuss the final selling of the house. She lures them inside, unaware of their brutal fate. At the present time, Seo Yun is spending time with her father as he teaches her how to drive. As they drive through a tunnel, her father starts disintegrating. She cries out as she tries to save the remaining fragments of her father, but it's too late. Meanwhile, young Seo Yun looks on in terror as young Suk chops her father into pieces. When Seo Yun wakes up, she finds herself alone in the tunnel. She runs back to the house, now abandoned, and finds writings on the floor in blood from young Suk, telling her to answer the phone. Suddenly, a phone rings in the room. Seo Yun answers it and it's young Suk. She tells her how she killed her father, and now she's going to kill her younger self. She gives Seo Yun one hour to find out how the cops will catch her or else she's going to kill her. Seo Yun screams at the phone and thrashes the room, feeling frustrated. She's lost her father, but she can't give up now. Through old news articles, she learns that a junk collector discovers Young Suk's bloody knife and turns it to the police, leading to her capture. She then forms a plan to kill off Young Suk. Feeding her false information, Seo Yun leads her to the strawberry farm where a gas explosion is waiting to happen. Things don't go according to plan and Young Suk leaves too early with the explosion leaving her with minor injuries. Seo Yun waits by the phone and is distraught when it rings, meaning her plan has failed. She can only listen and writhe in pain as Young Suk pours boiling water on the child, giving her back the burnt scars that she lost. Young Suk then tells her that it wasn't her mother's fault that her father died, but rather it was actually Seo Yun who turned on the gas valve and forgot to turn it off, leading to her father's demise. She calls Seo Yun a pathological liar and plans to kill her mom. She retrieves the knife and destroys the evidence. Desperate for answers, Seo Yun breaks into the police station and retrieves Mi Yun's journal only to learn that her timeline has once again changed and this time, Young Suk was never caught by the police. The house around her starts to change and she finds herself in the middle of Young Suk's lair. She goes to the basement and finds the phone. Meanwhile, back in 1999, Mi Yun arrives at the house with Seo Yun's mother who is looking for her family. They explore the house and ask to use the phone. On the other side, the phone starts ringing and Seo Yun answers it. She warns her mother to get out of the house immediately but is knocked out by 2019 Young Suk. With her cover blown, Young Suk takes a knife and slices Mi Yun's neck. Back in the present, the phone starts ringing again and a struggle ensues. Older Young Suk tries to strangle Seo Yun, but she fights back, biting her hand to escape her grasp. She grabs the phone and is able to escape to her room. Seo Yun's mother has managed to lock herself in the same room. The phone rings again and she answers it. It's her mother calling from 1999. As they struggle for survival, Seo Yun tells her mother to calm down and grab the fire extinguisher. She waits by the door but hears her young daughter's cry for help outside. She goes out and hugs her daughter with Young Sook striking her from behind. She stops the knife with her own hand and pushes the killer back into the room. Meanwhile, Seo Yun waits in the room as she sees the spatter of blood appearing on the wall, and now older Young Sook has made it to the room. But just as Young Suk is about to strike the child, the mother appears and pushes her off the balcony. In 2019, Seo Yun wakes up and finds herself alone in the house. She runs to the hospital but doesn't find her mother there. Fearing the worst, she goes to the cemetery and finds her father's tombstone. She cries, thinking her mother has died, but when turns around, she finds her alive and well, bearing scars on her neck and hands from that terrible night. She hugs her mother, thankful that they both survived the ordeal, and they walk side by side as they leave the cemetery. However, things are not over yet. Back in 1999, Young Suk survives the fall and is called by an older Young Suk, telling her to keep the phone with her no matter what happens, because that's the only way they can change things. The timeline changes and Seo Young wakes up, finding herself trapped in the hands of Young Suk once again. 
Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.